Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Dal, and there have been some changes to Outlaw Rogues in recent times on the PTR, and I had a few questions, if you can call them that, asking me if Outlaw Rogues will be a viable spec for PvP in the patch 7.1.5, which is the upcoming patch that is happening, I think, in about a month from now. The theory is that there was a nerf to run through artifact weapon trait. Uh, there was also a nerf to a finisher cost where now the finishers cost a little bit higher now for the artifact weapon as well in terms of traits. Prime stats have been adjusted for all specs and especially Outlaw and Outlaw did get an aura for 70% more effectiveness in terms of damage which does translate into PvP. I tested that in a video. But Outlaw is still getting a nerf to true bearing which is the effectively making every spec of rogue the same in terms of cooldown reduction. Uh, they also gave blind to assassination, which is another form of homogenization. Uh, let me explore a little bit in detail in terms of some of these changes. If you weren't aware on the true bearing change, they took out your defensive abilities into true bearing cooldown reduction, as well as your blind. They also gave blind to assassination, so now each spec has blind. Each spec has the same cooldown on blind. Each spec has the same uh, defensives and same cooldown defensives. So in a way, they basically made all three specs of rogue effectively similar in terms of major CC like a blind and major defensives like your evasions, repels, and cloaks. Uh, so effectively the theory is, let's bring it back to Outlaw, the theory is Outlaw's rogues burst will be weaker, the finisher cost will be increased so not as many finishes for PvP, and Outlaw can get as many blinds and defenses back up uh, as often as it used to compared to the other rogues, and the question is, does all this make Outlaw a terrible spec for PvP? Now let's talk a bit about the nerfs in terms of the finisher cost. The finisher cost change isn't that much. It basically makes your finishers go, I think if you, well, for my weapon I have an extra point into the finisher reduction, but it basically makes my, uh, let's say roll the bones difference of 13 and 17 difference. So it goes from 13 to 17. So our run throughs I think went from 23 energy to 27 or something like that. So the change I feel like in terms of energy is very minor. So it's a question of, whether we'll have, uh, I guess, less finishes that we can use. I don't think so, but I have uh, uh, footage to show you guys, so I'll explore that in a little bit. The other nerf is to your run-through damage. They de effectively decrease the uh, how many stacks or how much effectiveness can you get for run-through in terms of your artifact trait. And I'm pretty sure it went from like 16 to 12 or 14 to 12, uh, some small change. But they did also buff the main stats of all specs, so in a way Outlaw did get a buff to run-through indirectly. Uh, then they also gave the aura for Outlaw, which I got to test, and it does have an increase in terms of damage on the PTR. So in a way, you're nerfing run through in terms of your artifact weapon effectiveness, but you're also buffing Outlaw in general. So I think in a way it kind of like cancels it out, but the run through damage is a little bit lower for PvP as I got to test. So it's an interesting theory in general to deal with, but as you can tell, I do not fully agree with, uh, and I say this after testing Outlaw. So I was asked to test Outlaw on PTR and test the damage of the Outlaw spec rogue. First on a trained dummy and then I got asked to test it on a player. Uh, and if you remember PTR, PTR is just if you ever get on, barely anywhere plays skirmishes so I didn't get that many skirmishes done. And after hitting my burst a few times, I can say that I feel Outlaw still has a dog in a fight for the patch 7.1.5, but that's just my opinion and uh, it is not immune to being wrong. Uh, once every other rogue picks up the spec, once patch 7.1.5 comes out, then we'll know for certain. But until then, the only people that will be able to know for certain and really have a best input are people that get to test it out on 7.1.5. My opinion might differ from yours. Now, I have some footage with this and the footage is not perfect. I did have a limited patience with PTR. Oh, one, nobody queues skirmishes because nobody PvPs in PTR. Second, PTR is a laggy mess for me in most cases. And what I mean by that is, normally I play on Illidan 58 MS average, but then having to go from 58 to 200 plus in PTR gets very annoying fairly quickly. And uh, uh, don't get upset with me uh, because I didn't get that many footages because of the, uh, the lag. I tasted great internet speed, so there's no way I'm going back, let's be honest. Anyway, I got to test my damage against a live target, a leather class, and uh, which is perfect since last time I could test uh, PTR damage on an outlaw, comparing outlaw of PTR versus live was on a leather class, so I kind of have seen the numbers in the past and I can compare my previous numbers compared to current numbers. So it was perfect, I got to test it out on a rogue. But the difference between hitting a male and hitting a plate isn't all that high. It does have some reduction to damage effectively, uh, but 
effectively it's not enough of a reduction to make or break the spec if uh, that makes any sense to you guys so i get decent and damage on my rogue uh, i feel like my saber slash damage is increased my run through isn't too low and my auto attack slash mastery hits are slightly increased i would say my greed procs are a little bit weird right now because i can't tell if they're doubling themselves up on targets or if blizzard changed how greed's supposed to proc but i think greed is procking a lot more often but there's no confirmation since blizzard didn't really announce it anything about this or it didn't really make it on the mo champion or the wow ahead but after playing around greed is just something you kind of see in a blue moon and you don't really think much about it but here on the ptr servers you actually get to see greed happen a lot more often and sometimes it doubles up in terms of how much it hits a single enemy again might be a bug but might be intentional and if it is intentional then it effectively gives a run through similar damage that you had in the past but like with the delay as greed kind of like becomes part of a run through almost and it's almost a guarantee because it just happens so often i got some decent damage on a rogue and that's basically how i was hitting uh it was two different rogues and i know these rogues are jumping around and yes i did fuck up my stun play i blame the ms 100 percent blame the lag for this one i only had 15 minutes to play around with a uh, ms of like between 150 to 200 average of 200 plus uh so i didn't really have a lot of time to get used to the ms to get used to the lag and my setups but consider the following as a rogue, usually for our burst, we stun lock the enemy, meaning the enemies can't pop defensive. So the damage difference isn't too high, to be honest. I do understand that I didn't really get a stun on the enemy and they uh, didn't really have that many great defensives, which is why I'm saying this. Um, but we usually force a trinket as rogues normally do. And I know I fucked up oh, during my PTR footage, so I do understand. But before we burst, we usually force a trinket and we stun lock the enemy. And no one can really pop defensives during stun lock except for a druid. The reason I'm saying this ahead of time is um, I don't understand most of you will understand what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I burst it into a rogue that didn't have evasion or used it poorly. But what we're not trying to take a look at, and I did get a comment about it on the uh, live stream uh, where some people were really, really upset that I did that. But effectively, what we're trying to take a look at is the damage of how well I can do as a rogue. And normally, under normal conditions, if I had my normal MS, I'm pretty sure it would be fairly easy for me to get a normal setup. As a rogue, you're trying to make sure the enemy does not have a trinket one, so then you can stun lock him. While they stun lock, you're trying to make sure enemies like a rogue doesn't have a pre faint available, so you can stun lock and deal full damage. And even if the rogue has evasion up, you can dodge anything while you're stun locked. So the idea is to demonstrate realistic numbers of what's it like to burst on PTR in terms of PvP. So basically, what I'll try to do is get the footage out and the damage as raw as possible without any weird modifications where i have the burst and i'm able to display it and apply it on a leatherware and compare it to my previous testing on a leatherware and that's basically what i try to do is demonstrate the proper damage numbers not quite the technique in this lack best of a ptr so i do hope some of you guys have understanding behind all this and uh, i thank you all in advance for having patience and understanding with this video otherwise i would have to do the whole dory the explorer gag that i had to do on stream for a quite special few one of you. Uh, what is the door of the Explorer gag you asked? Make sure to check out the live stream and be clued in. A link in the description below so you guys can uh, uh, follow the stream and uh, check out all the antics that we do on there. Anyway, back to Outlaw Rogue. Even though Outlaw won't be able to blind quite as often and our damage still effectively is increased in a few aspects. And if Slicing S becomes a dominant buff for sustained damage where we are literally trucking enemies down because of just how much damage Slicing S is able to bring with our auto attacks, mastery hits, saber slashes, energy region that it gives, all the, the whole kit and caboodle, right? Um, then I think we'll be uh, stronger as a spec and Outlaw will definitely be a stronger spec. Which effectively will make us a lot like an assassination rogue without the bleeds, uh, but with more auto attack damage and with more upfront damage. Instead of having to put bleeds and kind of let it all uh, sustain and burst the enemies down over time. And also one thing that Outlaw Rogue does bring is Tricks of the Trade. Which is great in terms of burst combinations. So if Outlaw Rogue is able to deal a decent amount of damage in terms of sustained damage and decent amount of burst. When you take Tricks of Trade you basically are effectively giving yourself and another player extra burst. Which is great for arenas. So you give Outlaw a little bit more of an advantage in terms of bursting together during arenas. And I guess it would be an alternative to playing like Assassination Rogue. Chances are Assassination might be the best spec uh, because it seems to have all the damage and now that it has a blind might effectively be strong. But my thoughts are Outlaw shouldn't be too far behind. 
but in effectively none of the rogues really have any advantage except subtlety who simply just does not have bursts and, uh, they're just blizzard doing blizzard things and uh, i think the devs might know what well, might not know what's going on but we'll, we'll figure all that out once the patch comes out so anyway i feel like one of the advantages that outlaw still does have if you are looking at advantages we still do have true bearing so we're able to get our cooldowns back much faster we still do have tricks with chains so we're able to combo any kind of burst with any other bursty class something maybe like a dash warlock or a frost mage especially so i feel like that'll give us a little bit of an opportunity if we deal with the same sustained damage that an assassination rogue deals then we don't have to deal with poisons that means paladins are not as much of an issue even though they are doing a little bit of a change to pure of heart which is the talent that ultimately destroys what an assassination rogue can do by giving any kind of heal even a periodic heal a literal cleanse from your dots so i was uh, from your poisons you still get your bleeds but if you don't if you have bleeds running without any poisons you don't get energy you're falling behind in terms of damage you're literally losing energy that you need in order to deal burst damage to an enemy so yeah um hopefully um assassination won't be uh, too bad in struggle and I'll have, I'll have to go back and take a look at the exact nerve that they did to pure hard but it's supposed to be not as much of an issue and supposed to actually be a talent where players have to actively uh cleanse and actively do something in order to do the cleanse effect and have it uh, get applied but i think that outlaw rogues will still be a uh, innovative in terms of not cooldown reduction but also stun locks we are able to stun lock and use back to back to back if you're able to manage our combo points properly because we still do get to use between the eyes with our cooldown reduction uh and we also have grappling hook that we can use a lot more often because of cooldown reduction and if the slow uh, re uh slow nerf where our slows are not 50 percent but 30 percent effective if that still goes through into live version of 7.1.5 patch then effectively we'll want to be playing a spec rogue that has mobility and outlaw is the second best for mobility i guess the first one would be subtlety because of shadows uh shadow strikes because that still teleports you around all over the map but grappling hooks and the cooldown reduction will allow you to move around a lot more often allowing you to save sprint for those moments where you really need to use sprint and also effectively being able to use sprint because of cooldown reduction so we'll just have to see how things come out in 0.5. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for checking out the video. And feel free to leave comments in the description down below for anything discussed. Uh, got a question for all of you. Do you think Outlaw will be a viable spec in 7.1.5? Or do you think it will simply blow? Hope everybody has uh, had a great Xmas holiday weekend. And hope everybody has a good one. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see all of you in the next video.